So I was going to write a long introduction for this video, hyping up certain landmark displays Apple have created over the years, and then I realised every Apple display I've ever seen has just been phenomenal. They've had this insanely high standard for so long now. Anyway, there are some really technical reasons Apple's displays are just a cut above the rest. Firstly, Apple have prioritised high pixel densities in their screens for a very long time now. You've probably heard them use the term retina before. The retina display. What's that? And it turns out it's not just a load of marketing rubbish. When Apple unveiled their first retina displays in the early 2010s, they put emphasis on how the human eye couldn't discern individual pixels from one another because of how high the resolutions, and therefore pixels per inch, in their screens were. There's a magic number right around 300 pixels per inch. It seemed like a trivial thing at the time, but those high-resolution displays in devices like the Retina MacBook Pro from 2012 were way ahead of their time. The 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro released in 2012 has a 2880 by 1800 display, which is basically in between the 1440p and 4K standards. These days, that's a pretty nice laptop screen, but back in 2012, that would have been mind-blowing. Probably less than 1% of people had any kind of display with a resolution higher than 1440p, but there Apple were including one inside their laptops. These days, Apple have stuck firmly to their high PPI policy. They don't sell any products right now with displays under 218 pixels per inch. So the pixel density is a big thing, but that's relatively obvious. There are other, subtler factors at play here. Pretty much all Apple displays have no gap between the cover glass you look at and the LCD or LED panel underneath. Apple began to make their screens like that around 2011, attaching the glass directly to the panel. A lot of other displays still have a gap to this day though. Having no space at all makes objects appear printed onto the glass you're looking at, and does go a long way to help the display look better from all angles. Sometimes you can almost tell the gap is there in older or cheaper screens. You might have noticed Apple displays have this kind of shine to them that makes things on the screen appear just a bit more realistic, like they're right in front of you. Apple are very strict about which coatings they apply to their panels to achieve this effect. A huge number of manufacturers like Dell and HP apply this heavy sheet of matte anti-glare material on top of their screens, and it gives them this slightly washed out look, giving you slightly less contrast and saturation. Since 2012 though, Apple have been perfecting the process of applying a very thin coating of anti-glare product to their displays, keeping them glossy but avoiding reflections at the same time. The latest MacBooks do this impressively well, as you can see. Colour accuracy is another aspect of modern displays that's very important to a lot of people. Displaying colours accurately to how they look in real life contributes to how good a monitor looks, and not all monitors really are all that accurate. Some of the biggest demographics known for using Apple computers are creatives working in film, photography, and media in general. Apple are obviously very aware of this, and have been for some time. Those sorts of consumers typically need the most colour accurate displays, as they're working on pieces of media that might be shown all across the world. To ensure the most vivid, true-to-life colours, Apple calibrate all of their displays after they've been made to ensure they're aligned with certain industry standard colour spaces like Adobe RGB. Major tech review sites have often suggested that entry-level devices like the iPhone often have some of the highest standards of colour application straight out of the box. The very highest end studio monitors do sometimes have better colour replication than Apple's, but being accurate to such a high level at all price points is certainly a major achievement. So beyond the physical construction of each device, there are often software based and even psychological reasons our eyes think that the screens are so good. Apple does something called resolution scaling with their screens in macOS. So if an app has text coded into it that's a certain number of pixels in size, macOS will render the text to be exactly twice as big, so it doesn't appear tiny on one of their displays with a huge amount of pixels, like a 5K monitor. It's kind of difficult to describe, but hopefully it'll help if I show you as well. This is my MacBook rendering at its native resolution, and everything appears really small. Then this is it scaled by two which is pretty much what Apple defaults to these days. Resolution scaling keeps text proportioned correctly, and it makes sure the right amount of pixels are given to things like text and icons. 
16x10 is a bit out of the ordinary, but at least Apple stick to one aspect ratio across their entire Mac family. So those things have standard sizes in the design language of macOS's UI that developers tend to adhere to. That's why it's so rare to see icons with jagged edges on your launchpad, for example, and why the text is so clear on your toolbar. It's one of those weird things that don't really matter to the end user, but trust me, resolution scaling is absolutely key to creating the final look of an Apple display. It sounds kind of daft to mention straight after diving into pixel densities and resolution scaling, but there's a good chance the clarity of Apple's onboard speakers makes users believe their display quality is even better. Most tech reviewers will tell you the small speakers Apple engineer into tight spaces like their laptops and iMacs are simply unreal. There aren't really any laptop companies able to pull off sound quality better than the speakers on any of the 16-inch MacBook Pros. Having such good sound quality alongside each Apple display creates an audio-visual combination you just don't find anywhere else. Even the ads on YouTube sound so crisp. The latest MacBook Pros have six speaker arrays all blasting at you at once, which gives off an extra strong kind of surround sound feeling, almost like when you watch those 8D audio music videos. There's also a weird amount of bass for speakers that are obviously no bigger than my two pinky fingers. There are a couple of other things I'd like to quickly cover. Apple displays are generally some of the brightest on the market, which helps them perform well outdoors. They also get especially bright in certain areas thanks to great HDR support. I also have to say, getting rid of the glowing Apple logo did wonders for removing the weird bright spot you'd sometimes get when the logo acted like a window, letting daylight wash out the center of your screen from the back. So there you have it. Apple's displays really are best in class most of the time, and it's for a whole host of reasons. The company's emphasis on high pixel counts and good quality anti-glare coatings, alongside great manufacturing techniques and color calibration at the factory, do most of the physical legwork. And then software cheats like resolution scaling, as well as great surround sound, go that extra mile to immerse you into, well, what's on your screen. Speaking of what's on your screen, subscribe for more of the same every single week. I also have a Patreon page if you'd like to support what I do here financially. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you to my current patrons whose support I really couldn't do without. I'll see you all next week.